I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addicts Wife Podcast, episode number 135, The Ripple Effect. Your life does not have to revolve around your husband's pornography addiction. You are not defined by his choices or by what he sees on the screen. You are not just the Porn Addicts Wife. You are so much more. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to go from handling it to healed because I've been where you are and you don't have to stay there. My name is Jolene Wynn. I'm a member of the LDS faith, a certified life coach, and a wife of a former porn addict. And this is a podcast for the porn addict's wife. Hello, my ladies. How are you today? I am very glad to be speaking to you guys. And I wanted to let you know about a few housekeeping items first. The first thing is... Um, next week I am hosting coach week and I want to encourage y'all to come join me. I want to invite you to come join me for coach week. If you guys don't know what that is, coach week is a live event where I'm going live on zoom next Monday through Thursday. So this will be December 19th through you guys. Let me look at my calendar, the 22nd. Okay. December 19th through the 22nd, every single day at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am going live on Zoom, and this is your opportunity to come get coached and to experience coaching for yourself. The podcast is fantastic. It's really helping you learn what what to do, but coaching is where I teach you how to start applying it and give you the opportunity to see the transformation that can occur with coaching. I don't actually get to coach most of you because I can't coach you on a podcast, but I can talk to you on a podcast and you can listen, but I really want to encourage you guys to come. This time is the very last time that it will be free. All you have to do is go to my website, jolenewin.com. You will see a tab called Coach Week at the top. You can go right there. You can register. It has all of the details, and I want to encourage you guys to come live. Even if you can't make the calls, I want to encourage you to sign up because you will have access to the replay um, for about a week. After a week, then you will not have access to that, but you will get the most out of it if you come live. Even if you don't want to participate on the call, if you just want to come watch, I really want to invite you guys to come because this is something that I just have such a passion for is helping you guys see what is blocking you and how, and it gives me an opportunity to help you overcome those. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a day, or if you've been listening to the podcast for a year, I want to encourage you guys to come. Even if you've come to Coach Weeks before, come again. Because even if you don't speak up, someone is going to bring something up that you are going to relate to. And I guarantee you, you will come and experience coaching and leave better because of it. So again, go to my website, jolenewin.com, go to the Coach Week tab, and you can sign up for free. And again, ladies, this is the last time that I will be hosting Coach Week for free. I am hosting Coach Weeks and Master Classes pretty much on a monthly basis for the upcoming year, 2023, but they are not going to be free. So if you want to get in, this is the last time to come for free. Merry Christmas to y'all. That's what I wanted to do is give you a Christmas gift. Come coach with me for free for four days. I can't wait to see you there. Okay. The second thing that I wanted to offer y'all is if you guys haven't signed up for my emails yet, what I want to encourage you to do is go sign up for those because when you do, I am going to send you Um, a free PDF download. And that download is going to have all my best tips and my resources. So over the last couple of years, as I have been in this industry and been coaching, I have um, compiled a list of the best resources, not only for women, but for men. And this is something I get asked for a lot is where, where do you think, what are your resources? Where, what are your go-tos? Who should my husband talk to? What therapists, what coaches, what counselors, what programs, what, what is there out there for help? And this is a list that I have created for you. So if you guys go to my website, again, you'll be able to put in your email address and I will send it to you. That way you have it, okay? So again, Merry Christmas. That's totally free. Just go to my website and I'll email it to you, okay? All right, ladies, I am coming to you a little bit later than I normally do. Normally I record the podcast on Sunday night and it comes out Monday morning. And last night and all last week, I was thinking about, all right, what do I want to talk about on the podcast? And I came up with one and I hashed it all out. And then I came up with another one and I hashed it all out. But last night as I was sitting down, I almost came to record it. And I just thought, 
this isn't what I want to talk about. (laughs) And it seems so silly. It seems like it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Just go record the podcast. But it's hard for me to record a podcast when my brain is in another spot. So I'm not talking about what I was. I'm not talking about what I came up with the second time. I'm going to talk about what I really want to talk about, which is what has been hitting home for me the last month or so. As you guys know, my husband and I have been going through a lot over the last month. I have personally have been going through a lot of emotions, a lot of processing, a lot of hurt, resentment, bitterness, a lot of hopelessness, which is a new one for me. And it has been a lot of grief and a lot of pain and a lot of talking. And over the last couple of weeks, as I've been talking to my husband a lot, um, one of the things that has become clear to me is how the thoughts that we have and the emotions that we suppress, how that affects not only ourselves, but the people we interact with. And this is the ripple effect. I want you guys to imagine when you go into a river or a lake or any body of water, I want you guys to imagine that you walk out into a river, okay? And you have a small rock in your hand. Maybe it's about the size of your palm and it's totally and completely smooth, okay? And I want you to hold out your hand and imagine that you drop it into the water. And it's not even from a very long, you know, a big height, just from your body from where you're standing. Okay. Now here's what happens. We think that when we have something small and seemingly insignificant, that dropping it has no effect or even a minor effect. We assume that the ripples that get sent out from that thing, from that emotion that we suppress, from the thoughts we're trying to resist, we think that nobody else feels those but us. However, that's not true because ripples keep going. They don't just die as soon as you drop something in the water. That's why it's called a ripple. It actually keeps going and it will hit objects that are in the way, even five feet, 10 feet, 50 feet down the line. This has been so evident to me as my husband and I have been talking because the things that we're working through right now are just that. They're small things that have had a ripple effect. Things that emotions that my husband has, this is just, I'm just using his, his, him as an example, but we all do this, right? We all have emotions that we don't want to feel and his emotion that he didn't want to feel, the thing he was suppressing, the thing, imagine it's the rock that he's trying to drop in the water. He doesn't want it. He lets go of, lets go of it, right? He thought it wasn't affecting anybody. But it was, and it's so clear to me how that has popped up in different areas of our life, not only affecting him, but affecting me and our relationship. And it's so fascinating because what, ladies, what I want to offer to you guys today is that the emotions that you suppress, the things that you don't want to deal with, the things that you are trying to hold underwater, don't stay there. My husband described it once as like that game of whack-a-mole, right? Where when one pops up and you hit it, then another one pops up over there and you hit that one only to have another one pop up to the left. And you hit that and it's this intense game of trying to hit them all and keep them all down. Okay. That's what happens when we resist our emotions. When we try to keep all of our emotions buried beneath the surface, then what happens is it pops up somewhere else. Isn't this so fascinating? This is why ladies, we talk about Um, how we only have so much emotional capacity, right? When you try to resist all of your emotion, when you try to hold it down, it compounds and it builds. And you only have so much capacity to resist emotion until eventually it comes out. And it might not always come out in the same area of what you're suppressing, Okay, here's what I mean. If you're annoyed with your spouse and you're trying to resist that emotion, maybe you don't resist that emotion. Maybe you're totally fine being annoyed with your spouse, which is also fine, but this is just the example, okay? Maybe you don't wanna feel annoyed with your spouse and so you resist it, okay? But eventually resisting that emotion becomes very difficult. You reach your upper limit of your emotional capacity to resist and then it might come out later in annoyance or yelling at your kids, even though you're not really annoyed at them, you're really annoyed at your spouse and you've just been resisting it for so long that you can no longer handle any more emotional input. It has to come out, 
right? Do you guys see what I'm saying? This is the ripple effect. This is what happens, ladies. When you resist all of that resentment, all the bitterness, all of the not enough, all the worthlessness, all of the grief, all the pain of everything that you've been dealing with, with your husband's pornography use and all the actions that he's taken. When you resist all of that emotion and you just try to bury it and power through, it comes up later. It has a ripple effect. The repression of emotion has a ripple effect, not only that it's affecting you, but it's also affecting your relationships, especially with those closest to you. Okay. Now, again, this might be tricky because our brain looks for consequences right where we're standing. Okay. Our brain wants to look down when we're standing in that river and look at where we plopped the rock in. And as long as there's nothing around exactly where we plopped it in, it thinks, oh, good, nothing else is affected. But when you look out, when you look up, you see the ripples that get created. And here's the thing. They start off very centered around that rock and they only expand the further they go. Okay, the things that we think only affect ourselves don't. We affect everyone around us, especially those closest to us. The things that we think are not affecting those around us, they are. The emotions that you are trying to deal with and suppress, I guarantee you, those around you see that, they notice it, it's affecting your relationship, okay? Let me give you an example. I had a girlfriend of mine who, um, she's actually not a client, just a friend, and she was informing me she's been doing thought work and, and working on her own thoughts and her emotions, and she's been working with a different coach you know, throughout the year, and she was talking to me about how growing up, she had this experience with her parents, um, and they got divorced, and it was not a pretty divorce. There was a lot of you know, name calling and a lot of blame and a lot of guilt on the kids, and so she learned to be very independent. That was how she handled that circumstance. She thought, you know what? I'm not going to depend on either one of my parents for anything. I don't want them to fight about it. So I'm just going to figure it out by myself. And that independence almost became to a point where she wouldn't allow other people in her life right? Does this make sense? Right? Then that's exactly what happens. We feel like maybe if I can just do everything myself, if I just protect myself, if I close off from everyone else, then I won't get hurt, right? The problem with that is it's very lonely. It's very isolating. We isolate ourselves in our attempt to save ourselves from emotional pain. But isolation is emotional pain. Loneliness is emotional pain. We don't actually end up preventing ourselves from feeling emotional pain. We actually end up creating it without the benefit of all the positives that come from having relationships. So this is what she was doing. All this was subconscious. She didn't know that this is what she was doing, but it was a self-preservation which served her well for a very long time. However, after she got married and she had a baby, she said it was actually very difficult for her to connect with her baby because of how intensely she had sheltered her herself in order to protect herself. She had to work a lot in order to have a lot of those maternal instincts that come naturally to a lot of people because it felt so vulnerable to her. And here she is. She was talking to me about how last week her daughter, who's now 14, um, was doing a project and her daughter got so overwhelmed and so frustrated with her school project that she just threw it in the trash and she sat down and started to cry. And my friend said she was able to go over and put her arm around her daughter and actually have compassion for her daughter and feel close and connected to her daughter. This is the ripple effect, ladies. When you have emotion that you are suppressing, okay, and that suppression of emotion, right, was vulnerability. She didn't want to feel vulnerable around other people. And so she was suppressing that it affected her relationship with her daughter. For years, for years, she felt like she couldn't um, connect with her daughter the way that she wanted to because she felt so closed off. She didn't have friends like she wanted to because she was so worried about getting hurt because of her past experience. Does this sound familiar, ladies? Right? We do this. We close ourselves off thinking that it will somehow protect us and prevent us from getting hurt. But what it actually does, it hurts us in the moment and it hurts those around us. But as she started doing the work, as she started looking at this and healing herself, which is not easy work to do, but as she started looking at herself and healing the pain and being willing to open up to vulnerability, that has what has enabled her to have a positive ripple effect. Ladies, the ripple effect works both ways. It works with hurt and it works with healing. 
Okay. The hurt that you feel has a ripple effect on yourself and those around you, especially your spouse and your kids. But so does healing. So many of you are so worried. Um, What if I start looking at all of this stuff? What if I start working through it and then it starts to affect my kids? This is something I hear a lot. It's, you know, I don't want to tell my kids what's, what, what's happening between my husband and I because I don't want them to be affected. Ladies, they are affected. Subconsciously, they feel it. They know something's up. Okay, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to offer to you that you talk to them about it. Now, how much detail you give is entirely up to you. But when my parents came to me when I was 12, and uh, actually I walked in, <laughs> this is a side tangent story. I walked into my house when I was 12 and my dad was doing the dishes. Have I told you guys this story? And I said, wait a minute, giant red flag. My dad has never done the dishes. What is he doing? And my mom said, don't worry. So I went to my mom and I said, what's up? Why is dad doing the dishes? And she said, your dad and I are going to counseling. Nothing is wrong. We just want to improve our marriage. He's going to do some things a little bit differently around the house. I'm going to do some different things and we're going to work on it. And it was great. I had no problem with that. And that's what I'm offering to you, ladies. You don't have to bear all. I don't even know what my parents' issues were. I just knew that they were working on it and it explained things to me that I was already seeing. There was already a ripple effect. Your kids are already affected. They're affected by the way that you interact with your spouse, the way that you retreat into yourself when you think no one is watching, the way that you cry at night and you can't get up in the morning because you're too exhausted from the things you've been dealing with throughout the day. They are affected ladies already. Okay, there is a ripple effect. That stone of hurt that you have plopped in the water Your kids see it, they feel it, even if they don't know what it is. So if there's going to be a ripple effect, ladies, let there be one of healing as well. Ladies, the work of growth and progression is not easy work to do. (laughs) It feels easier to hide from it. It feels easier to just look down and narrow your focus on that direct water that's centered around what you plopped in. And it's easy to just narrow your scope to the point where you don't even see the ripple that it's creating in your own life. But that's not any better. Ladies, I want you to think about this. It's almost 2023. How are you feeling about yourself and your relationship, your marriage, your spouse right now? And is that any different than it was six months ago, a year ago? Because if that is not an answer that you enjoy, or even are you where you want to be? And if the answer is no, then what are you going to do to change it? Because the answer is it's going to have a ripple effect. The more you keep yourself in misery, the longer you keep yourself in misery, the worse, the more miserable you become. It, it, It becomes exponential. It's not that you stay the same. It becomes exponentially worse because now you're there longer right? And it feels harder. And there's that much more retraining of your brain that you have to do, that much more emotional baggage that you have to process. And I'm not saying this to be all doom and gloom and to say you're hopeless because that is not true at all. What I want, ladies, is to encourage you to start today that it's not too late, that there are ripple effects in your life that you're not even seeing. I I, I, I wish I could give you the exact example that I'm speaking of about with my husband. And I'll give you kind of half the example, okay? I'm not going to go into the a lot, all the details, but here's what I want to offer. This is something that came up the other night. We were talking maybe a week ago and we were talking about, he, he recognized that he had some discontent was the word that he, that he came up with the emotion that he was feeling. Now, this discontent is not a huge part of our relationship, but there were mostly, uh, there are a few things that he feels a little annoyed at that I do which is totally normal, okay? However, he didn't like that he felt that way about me. And so he had been suppressing these emotions for 14 years. Ladies, next Monday is our anniversary, 14 years. And he's been repressing these for 14 years. That's a very long time. Now, here's the problem, is that the repression of that emotion created a ripple effect, okay? And let me give you an example, okay? So here's what happened, is the repression of that emotion was so intense. He at some point said, I don't want to feel that way about my wife. I don't want to feel that way about Jolene. And so I'm just never going to allow myself to feel it. And so anytime it would come up, his brain would subconsciously buffer with something else, not pornography, but something else. 
Okay. This is the ripple effect. And it wasn't even something that was related to me, but it did affect our relationship. You guys, this is the ripple effect. And it was so clear to me as we worked through this, as we talked about this, I said, this is the ripple effect, which is what I've been wanting to talk about is the repression of an emotion doesn't make that emotion go away. I've talked to you guys about holding a beach ball underwater. That's what it's like. You're trying to hold a beach ball underwater and it is exhausting to do. And eventually you become so exhausted from doing it, you can't do it anymore and it flies up. Now, here's the problem with this is that sometimes it flies up in a completely different area, which is what happened here in our relationship. He was feeling discontent and annoyed about something completely unrelated and the repression of or about something with me. And then he repressed that so much that any time that emotion came up, that he would buffer subconsciously against it with something else. Again, something completely unrelated, something that showed up in a completely different area of his life, and yet it still affected our relationship. You guys, our brains are crazy. I mean, they're awesome, but they're also nuts, right? And the repression of our emotions shows up. Ladies, as I have worked through everything I've worked through with my husband over the last month, what has just come back to me in full force is how important, how vital this work is, the emotional resilience. If you learn nothing else in your life but how to be emotionally resilient and and become an emotional adult, that is the most valuable thing you can learn. This is something I wanted to share too. I've had a couple experiences with my kids over the last week and I want to offer them to you as a hope of how this can affect your kids. Not only will it affect your relationship with yourself, the way you think about yourself, but also with your husband, but it will can also affect your kids. Let me give you an example. Yesterday, my daughter, she's 10. She was um, at church and in Sunday school and my husband was helping out to teach her class. And he said they were talking about things you can choose right? And someone said, well, you can choose your attitude. You can change your attitude if you want to, right? And Scarlett, I guess, raised her hand and said, you can actually change, you can choose your thoughts and your thoughts create your feelings. And her little friend in, in her class next to her turned to her and said, how do you know that? And she said, oh, my mom's a life coach. <laughs> and it was so good. And I want to give you another example. Another example actually happened over Thanksgiving. My Family and I, we went to this um, big Airbnb in Florida, and in this Airbnb, they had a laser tag room, and they're like all the boys and all the all the grandkids just were in there all the time. And so one time, I walked by the laser tag room, and my son Weston, he's nine, he came out and he was crying, and he sat on the bottom step, and I sat down next to him, and I just let him cry for a minute, and I asked him what was going on, and he mentioned something about how he felt like it was unfair that he felt like he never even got a chance to shoot anybody that everyone was just like his gun didn't every time his gun got shot right it has to recharge before it can shoot again and he felt like he was just his he wasn't even getting a chance to shoot anyone because he was getting shot at and then he couldn't even let his gun recharge before he would get shot again and so he was just kind of upset and that it was unfair and we talked it through and about why that bothered him and we got to the emotion and how he just felt, um, I think it was unfair or sad. I don't remember the exact emotion of whatever it was that he was feeling. And I, and then he said, without any prompting from me, he said, you know what? And I can just feel it. And then I can choose what I want to do next. And he sat there for a minute and he felt whatever it was that he was feeling. And then he gave me a hug and he went back in the laser tag room. You guys, This is what it's all about. And I'll give you another example. My daughter, Georgia, she's seven. And we were doing math. I was doing math with her um, because I'm homeschooling. I was doing math with her, you guys, which is a disaster in and of itself because I get frustrated with math. She gets frustrated with math. And she sat there saying, I don't know. But it was actually things she did know. And I sat there and I said, look, if you tell your brain you don't know, then it's going to stop looking for answers. What happens when you do that? What happens in your brain when you say, I don't know? She says, well, when I say I don't know, then I get really frustrated and I get really upset. And then my brain just starts to tell me how I can't do it and I'm not smart enough and I can't figure it out and it's too hard. And I said, yeah. And then what happens? She's like, then I just get more upset and frustrated. And I said, yeah. And she looked at me and she said, mom, it's like a circle. You just keep going around. And I said, yes. Yes. 
You guys, ladies, this is why the, the ripple effects of hurt, they affect people, right? But so does healing. So does growth. So does progression. The more you learn, the more you heal, the more that becomes the effect that you leave behind. There's going to be a ripple effect from your actions either way. You get to choose if it's going to be a ripple effect of hurt or healing. Ladies, I love you so much. And I just know there is so much in you. I have every confidence. I believe 1000% that you can have the life that you want to have. You can feel the way that you want to feel about yourself, about your spouse, about your marriage, about your children, about your future. I believe that a hundred percent. And I know that that's hard for you guys to believe sometimes. So I want to offer that you can borrow my belief, borrow my confidence, borrow my belief any time you want. You can just think to yourself, Jolene thinks I can do this. I know you can do this, ladies. The work is simple. Is it easy? No, but the process is simple. It's everything I'm teaching you on the podcast. And if you want help with it, if you want to see how you can take it to the next level and actually start changing and experience that transformation, then come join me next week at Coach Week. I will help you. Bring me your problems. I want to help you. I want to help you push past those barriers. And I want to get you where you want to go because it's absolutely possible. I love you, ladies. And I'll see you next week. Take care. All right, ladies, if you are loving what you are learning on the podcast, I want to invite you to come join my coaching program. This is where we take it to the next level and we actually start applying and learning the how of moving forward. This podcast has taught you the what and the coaching program is where you're going to learn the how. This is where you learn how to actually start moving forward, process all of that pain that you feel and let it go once and for all. If you are ready to finally move forward and stop living a life that revolves around your husband's pornography addiction, then I want to invite you to come join me today. Just head to my website, jolinewin.com and sign up today. I can't wait to see you there.